Hello everyone, I am Argama Witch, and today I want to talk about uh, how to make ears and tails in Vroid Studio. You can actually make a great many things in Vroid Studio. Uh, for example, my hat here is made out of hair. And it's all of these, we can just turn all these off. And you can see how it is done. And even this um, hair band is also made from hair. My earrings are also made from hair. Uh, but right now, I want to show you how to do uh, some animal ears because people often ask for animal ears or want to know how to do them. And there's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, so let's jump into this, shall we? First thing I do is I grab a new freehand group. Uh, I like to shrink it down as short as possible because I am going to be pulling it up this uh, mesh up and over and I uh, click on the mirror tool which is up here. I'm going to pull these out so they don't get lost in there. And we're going to just pull them straight up. And up. And right about, right about, right about there I guess. It's fine. And I'm going to pull these other ones down in just a little bit. Because we want the ears to come out from the hair. So this works for me. Uh, let's do some cat ears. Because uh, if you can do cat ears, you can pretty much do dog ears. Dog ears are just rounded tip cat ears. Fox ears are just much longer cat ears. So, uh, And rabbit ears are extremely long ears. <laughs> you could do that too. Uh, so I'm going to turn the mirror off. Because I want to take this front part and I want to pull it as close to the center as possible. I'll grab these other ones and just want to them under here. So what I'm trying to do is make this as flat as possible, and this is where my ears are going to be up against. Like that, yeah. And I keep it open in the back so I can work from the inside out. Uh, or else sometimes it gets a little confused on what layer you're working with. So pull this in just a little bit more. Uh, this also works for horns as well. It works for a lot of things. Pull that, and I'll pull this up in just a smidgen. Beautiful, I think that'll do just fine. Alright. <clears throat> so, I turn mirror back on, because I don't want to have to do this more than once. I will grab my brush tool, and I'm going to pick... I'll do this one, because I don't use this uh, hair texture anymore. And the first thing I'm going to do is come down over to here, under hair parameters, and I want to make it a triangle, and I'm going to adjust this so it's kind of more in an ear-ish shape. And we can adjust this later, but if you adjust it later, then it means you have to do uh, full size. I'm going to thicken that up just a little bit. All right. Now once you have that, you're going to find where you want to have this ear, and then just pull it up. Alright, doesn't look too bad. We're going to fix it a little bit. I uh, grab this select tool, make sure I grab the freehand group itself, and I'm going to thicken this out because ears are not very flat, they're kind of thick. And I want it even thicker than that, so I'm going to take this number and I'm going to just type in 5. Five might be a little too much. Let's go back down to four. Yeah, four looks good to me. Uh, I'm also going to make it a little wider. And yeah, that's not bad. Uh, and then I'm going to take uh, the uh, control point selection and pull it in. Oops. And this is why I have a flat area is because it likes to jump to the back side. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this control point from the back side and pull it down into the hair. It's gonna disappear in there. And let's just kinda grab some of these control points and move them a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. All right, now uh, while we're here, we're gonna take this uh, texture parameter and bring it down as small as possible. And then we're gonna go over into our textures. Now again, keep in mind that this texture isn't being used uh, for anything else. Normally I'd add a new texture. 
So that's this one right here. You can see as we change the color. So what I'm going to do is going to grab this hair color and paint the whole thing. I kind of, if I can, try to mark out where where the inside of the ears are. Also, it has a shade on where you can move the shade. It has a highlight on, which you shouldn't have. We're going to move that. Alright, now we're just going to color all this in. And to make this a little silly because I have two hair colors, I'm going to make the inside of my hat ears, which is here as we figured out from this, my blue. And as we can see, it's kind of upside down. So keep that in mind as you're working. And you'll see as we turn around that the back is the brown because we use the brown. And I'm going to grab some of this brown up here. I'm going to kind of give it some like spikies. Uh, normally I would take this into a different program to edit it in and make it look all fancy wancy, but I mean this is just for the sake of showing you how this works. Uh, yeah, now you see how this is kind of jagged? It's because of the smoothness. You can straighten out that smoothness and notice how the smooth is right out. And if for some reason like the offset's not where you want it, you can just adjust it here. But see, if you have this too wide, it's going to wrap around the whole side. You kind of want to small enough like that. And you can even adjust the height of where it can go. Now, you see how this one's kind of facing uh, the same direction as this? If I wanted it the opposite way, I would have to uh, make a new texture for it and adjust it as such. But for this, it's it's fine. See, and now I have some cat ears. And I've decided that I want to adjust them ever so slightly, so I'm going... And now one of the things I do when I add uh, ears is I give them bones, but I don't uh, do the full length of it. It's one bone and it's about halfway up. And this way, uh, let's go to the camera. And do a pose and we'll do a walking. This way, the tip of it bobs a little bit. You can see it a bit more when running. Uh, but if you want it even more flexible, then you just adjust the stiffness. So let's go over to here. Go to bones. Let's make one really really cool. so this one's gonna be have almost no stiffness and you can see how much more bobs than the other one and you'll notice it even more during movement but I like just the slight movement just the ever so slight movement uh, mostly because animal ears don't interact like the way this one is let's do it to about uh, let's say 34 35 Move this down just a little bit too. All right, and that's how you do uh, one type of an oops. That's how you do one type of animal ear. Uh, there's another type of way of doing an animal ear, and I don't mean one type as in one animal, but all animal ears are applied the same way. And how you do it? Well, let's uh, do another freehand group. We are still going to have it up like this. And this time we're going to do it in a couple of layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the texture I want, which is this one, which is the same as my hair. Uh, I'm going to do it as a non-triangle, do it as a diamond shape, and fluffy shape. We don't need it so thick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one half to go up this way and the other half to go up this way. Okay. Um, we don't need this anywhere near as thick as we had the other ones. I don't think that might work. 
And this will allow you to kind of adjust more what the shape is going to look like. The other one is pretty much working on the triangle where you're going to have a flat front and a rounded back. This is kind of rounded in both directions. Uh, and so this isn't too bad. I'm also going to do a third one in the center. And we're gonna redo that and remember that I have to start it from the bottom and go to the top. Alright. And you want to start at the bottom, go to the top uh, for both ears, or else it's not going to work out right when it comes to uh, adding the bone. Eh. This is fine. Now what I'm going to do is do a new freehand group and I'm going to adjust the mesh. I'm going to pull it forward just a smidgen. Oops, I have the mirror on. i got to remember to turn that mirror off. I'm just going to pull this forward just a little bit. Okay. This might seem like more work, but you have more control over what it actually looks like. So this is the only reason I would suggest doing it this way, just depending on how much more control you want on making something look like what you actually want it to look like. So here's an example of another one, and if you really want, you can also make another mesh in front of it and then do like the little spiky things. And this allows you to only work with like um, one or two hair colors, and you don't have to worry about drawing. Um, the design like we did on this one. So this one kind of gives it that flow, but it is very flat on the front. Whereas this one kind of gives it more of like a bulk. And if you really want to adjust things like to make it bigger, you can, uh, you know, just mess around. That's how I learned how to do this program is all just messing around and not being afraid to experiment. No. Uh, and I would do the bones like I did the other way. Uh, but for this one, I'm just gonna stick to the simple ears because I can. Now, if you were going to just uh, use cat ears and you didn't wanna have to worry about a tail or anything, I would export it at this point and you would be all set to use it. If you wanna add a tail, the tricky thing to that is, is it's going to require you to bring it over into Unity. Uh, but let me show you how you make a tail. And all tails, with maybe the exception of a rabbit tail, are done the same way, and they will all need the Unity work. So I'm going to delete these because I don't really need two sets of ears. I'm going to add a new freehand group. And let's take the height down low. Pull it out as far as possible. And we're going to give me a very long tail. What we're going to do is basically pull this hair mesh down until the center point is about where the uh, tail would attach on the character. So, like right about here, that's where the butt is, that's where this is going to be. I'm going to pull these out a little bit. Just give me some more room to work with. They're not that important. Uh, they might be more important if you're working with, say, a uh, fox character. Uh, because you'll want like a wider tail. Or maybe even a dog or a cat with a really fluffy tail because it's gonna curve a little bit. But since we're just doing like a cat tail, which is about one stroke, we don't really need to worry about it. Uh, let me bring this up a little higher. I want to be able to see my cattail. Perfect. Alright. And I'm going to grab my brown again. Make sure I'm on the layer I want. And I do it from the top in in order to see what I'm doing. I'm going to do a single stroke. And then I realize that I have... Uh, my mirror on, so let me turn that off and do it again. 
All right, so right now I have kind of a rat tail, but we're gonna adjust this. I'm gonna increase the thickness in both directions. I'm going to adjust the shape of it. So I want it kind of like a rounded tail, right? And it can taper in a little bit, that's fine. And my outfit wasn't meant to really have a tail. Usually I try to adjust it so it does, but this is fine. I am going to take this and pull it in a little more if I can. Uh, and then I just uh, kind of adjust where everything is lined up. So I want it kind of more centered. Hmm, that doesn't look bad, but I kind of want a slightly thicker tail, so I'm going to grab the freehand group. So you notice how in when we selected the hair, we were already at full max? Well, so you can adjust that for each individual hair and on the group in total. So now you notice they're not as thick anymore. So we can adjust the thickness. So my thick cat tail. I want it to be not as wide, so I'm going to look down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me adjust the texture on this. And I have shading on the bottom, which is fine. Um, now, what you're gonna wanna do is add a bone to this. Uh, it doesn't matter if you want this to move or not, in order to get it to attach where we want it, it needs to have a bone group and it needs to have its fixed point as close to the ass as possible. I'm gonna go about there, get a little bit of gravity. I wanna see how this looks. All right, gotta remove the gravity. So you see how it's just floating around the body as I move? It's because it's still considering it a ponytail. And we don't want that, so we'll remove all the gravity. Still a little, still a little floppy, so let's uh, up the stiffness a little bit. That's a little better. What if we bring the stiffness up all the way? It's not bad. Um, let me go back to design and see if there is a way I can bring it closer to the body. What I want is so we can actually see this tail. I mean, that'll make do a little better. And you can really fudge with all this, and this will make it like more stiff and less stiff because of how much it's working with. And we'll see what it looks like in motion. Usually I'll do a walking motion so you can kind of see how much bob it has. Yeah, it's pretty good. I do want to adjust the tip. I want it curled, but I don't want it to look like a monkey tail. We're going to kind of go and adjust it like that. See it in walking motion. Walking kind of gives me the general idea because the head doesn't bob so much, so we can see how much it's going to sway. Yeah, so you can see it a little bit. Um, and that's pretty good. Um, so now I have my cat tail. At this point, we're going to have to export. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to export, and we're going to hit this mesh re uh, material ma uh, reduction, material reduction, and here it's going to say enable hair combination. You're going to unselect that, All right? And then you're going to export this. All right, and then you're going to want to import your avatar into Unity. If you do not know how to do this, I have a video that talks about adjusting blend shapes that explains how you can get your avatar into Unity. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download this particular uh, asset uh, from Booth. I'll have a link down in the description below. 
it's going to transfer the bone weight. Now it is completely in Japanese, but I'm going to explain to you what it says and how it works. Uh, once you have it installed, it'll have a tool that looks like this. It'll pop up, and it'll look like that. Uh, so here's our bottle. You can see it has a tail. You can see that if we uh, hit the play button, move the head, this just cuts right through the body. It is just this snake thing that's swallowing our head around. And we don't want that. So what you're going to want to do is right click on your character and open prefab asset. And over here you're going to see a whole bunch of bones. These are all the bones in your body and the hairs. Now what you're going to want to do is find the, uh, the tail bones, which for me should be here. Yep, you can see this going around. Um, so we're going to take this and we're going to move it over onto the hips. We want this to be in the hips. So you just drag and drop. And for the most part, we don't need that anymore. Now I take the, where it was, was the head. And I put it in this top one. This is basically saying where it was located. And the bottom one is where we want it to locate, the hips. And then I grab this entire uh, hair joint with this long number, which is the tail. And I'm gonna drag it in the top, and I'm just gonna click this button, okay. On top of that, I'm gonna grab wherever this tail is in this hair, and if you have multiple hairs there, say you have like a big fluffy fox tail, uh, you're gonna have to do this for each and every one. You're gonna grab this, drop this over in the top one, which is which bone you wanna move, uh, or reattach, and you click again. This is just kinda like, just in case. Now we come back over here. I close up my prefab, um, which was just this back button. And then I'm gonna go to play. And look at the scene. I'm gonna grab the neck, I mean, the head. I'm gonna move it, and you see that that tail no longer follows it, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, at this point, we can now export it. And that is pretty much how you attach a tail to the butt, and how you can make different ears in Vroid Studio. Uh, there are some limitations, yes. However, there is plenty you can do and do workarounds if you're clever enough. I hope this has helped you out in some way. Uh, if it has, please give it a like and share. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but for the most part, this is how I do things. The hair is a very versatile tool in Vroid Studios and you can do great many things with it. So please keep that in mind when working with it. And I will see you guys in my next Vroid tutorial thing. So see you later!